Eternal One, help us, hold us, heal us. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good evening. It is so good to see all of you here. And to my Lutheran siblings who I have not met except for a Zoom call a year ago, welcome. And I'm looking forward to getting to know you. And I have deep care and much gratitude for your bishop and my colleague, Donald Chris. So thank you. It's a hard time in the world, don't you think? A stunningly hard time. I don't even need to list the issues. I can pause right now and you can fill them in. And yet, and still, we gather here today together. Interestingly enough, the Religious News Service reports that over the last few years, there has been a profound rise in Italy in the number of people who wish to be de-baptized. De-baptized, yep. Which in Italy amounts to adults who were baptized as children who no longer believe in Jesus or God or practically speaking the teachings of the Roman Catholic Church, who then renounce the promises that were made for them as infants. They, they, they fill out a form that's available online, citing why they no longer believe, and ask to be released from their baptismal promises. And this form is then filed with the local bishop, and eventually a note is made in the parish register where the person's baptism has been recorded, stating that they have abandoned their faith. Now, of course, church officials do not use the word de-baptize. Saying what we know to be true, you cannot unbaptize someone. I mean, the event has taken place, that fact remains. But what an adult can do now is use this process to publicly leave the church. And after the form is received, the individual is recognized as formally relinquishing their faith and their connection to the church. An event, a sacrament was given to them, a potential pathway for their life was offered them, and for many and varied reasons as an adult, the individual chooses to visibly distance themselves from this way of being. It is an interesting rite of passage. Pretty much the exact opposite of why we have gathered here today. But welcome, friends, to what is increasingly becoming a countercultural event. In an insanely fraught time in our world, 
in a moment in history when an escalation to nuclear war does not seem unthinkable, in a time when more people, when asked of their faith tradition, are replying none or is identifying as spiritual but not religious, in a historic moment when Christianity in this country is heavily identified with a conservative right-wing political agenda, and mainline Protestant Christianity is muted in our witness to the gospel of Jesus Christ, welcome to this moment. Welcome to this time and this place, this service of worship where we collectively say, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. We, in spite of and because of the world, have gathered here today to say we wish to see Jesus and to renew our promises. We wish to say again, I will, with God's help, follow Jesus and embody his gospel in our world. And why, in heaven's name, why do we do this? Because we need to remember. And because we need to remember together. We need to remember what holds our souls together. We need to remember how to embody God's call to be in this world. We need to remember how it feels to respect the dignity of every human being. We need to remember what it means to continue in the apostles' teaching, the breaking of the bread and the living of those prayers. We need to remember what it takes to love our neighbors as ourselves. We need to remember how to persevere in resisting evil and when we do screw up like you read about it, what it feels like to say, I am so very sorry. We're here today to remember all of this and to do it together. Christianity has never been a solitary event. We were baptized in a community with witnesses. We were ordained in a community with witnesses. And the only way we are ever going to live out our faith is in community with witnesses, with each other. We make individual promises, we renew our personal vows, but we do it in the midst of each other, together. Even Christ didn't make his promises by himself, but rather in a crowd. And we remember today together the promises that we have made. Our world is fraught and fragile and frail. Yet here we are together offering, promising ourselves and our souls to be as Jesus Christ was and is and will be in our world. We are today together 
audaciously offering to be Christ's hope in our world. And there is no way that I can do this by myself or that you can do this by yourselves. I am way too flawed. We're all way too flawed. But together, with each other, we can. People do not get de-baptized together. That rite of passage seems to be a solitary event. But embracing those baptismal promises, embodying those ordination vows, that work, that sacred embodied prayer can only happen together. So here we are, remembering, renewing together our hope, our longing to be in this fragile world as Jesus was. And may we, who have undertaken this work, offer each other the grace and the courage to carry it out. In Christ's holy name, may we pray. Amen.